Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Jason here with Alex King and Daniel Mangana. Today is Thursday, April the 30th, 2020, 4 p.m. New York time. And wherever you are in the world, thanks for joining us for another episode of LOA Today, your daily dose of happy. And we are going to be in the helping people get into the happy mode mode. Is that a double mode? <laughs> double mode. Today. <laughs> Because we do that every day, but we're especially going to do it today because uh, this is a good day for it. I don't know about where you are, Alex, and well, Daniel, it's probably not true where you are, but here it's it's gray and rainy, and I find that on gray and rainy, yep. I need to pick up pick up the tempo a little bit and get into a better space. Is that where it is? Where you are? Is it, is it kind of gray and rainy in in the Cape? Yeah, it's gray and rainy. Yeah, what is Daniel? But this is snuggling nap weather for me, so I love it. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's good. Of course, Daniel's got the sun. I mean, you always have the sun, right? In Mexico, isn't that the way it is there? <laughs> it rains now and then. And sometimes it's overcome. Mm. Sometimes it's overcast. Okay. Right. But so, you couldn't anyway. tell from his Facebook, though. <laughs> he puts out a. Uh, the, one of the slogans for here is "No, no bad days" is one of the uh, mm-hmm. one of the slogans for here. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you had uh, a bit of an event on Tuesday. I, I just kind of noticed it before we did the show today. But, I mean, this this is a pretty big deal. It's really funny. I was on a, a mastermind call um, for a program that I'm in, um, in not running on Monday. And I was talking about this obsession that I used to have and kind of still have with getting a, like a Wall Street Journal or New York Times bestselling book. Because uh-huh. mm-hmm. I've got Amazon now. Twice. I've got two best-selling books there. Um, one is my own, and one is a contributor. And uh, he was like, "Yeah, it's it's not that big a deal for you because maybe you're around people that have best-selling books and they've got this and they do that, right?" But most people don't have like an international podcast and best-selling right. books and all this stuff. So like, I, I found myself going there again. Would you like? Oh, it's like I just put out a book. That's what I do. Oh. <laughs> No, I remember it took me 10 years to get the first one of those done. So maybe being gratitude. So thank you for calling me back to ground. Yeah, there you yes. go. Out. I mean, a, a book is a lot of work. They, they, they don't come mm-hmm. cheap. They, they, they take a lot of time, effort, brain power, sweat and tears, mm-hmm. sometimes a lot of joy. I mean, it's a whole mixture of emotions. And when you finally finish it, I mean, there's certainly satisfaction. It feels good. But it's, a, it's an accomplishment. And especially when it's on a good topic, you got you picked a great topic because your book's called <laughs> Money Game, not the yeah. Money Game, just Money Game. I like it. <laughs> yeah, so it's um my my Money Game tool that I created a few years ago, and that I it, it's a conversion of basically the flow funnel, the beyond attention flow funnel, directly related to how to micro shift into creating bigger and bigger levels of financial abundance. So. We've had some amazing testimonials over the years. I did a five-day challenge with it in October, I think, and mm-hmm. people just manifested ridiculous sums. So it's good stuff. It's good fun. Um, and uh, I basically gone a bit deeper into it. I did a workshop once on it, so we took some of that and made a guidebook on how to take the money game, apply it not just in money, but how you could use it to create Abundant, an abundant relationship or to create clients for your business or to get uh, a promotion in your career, like whatever it is that you're seeking to do goes through the core principles, how to unfold it and then how to direct it. And you said that uh, you, you did the uh, five day workshop in October. That was just a one time workshop. There were no other. No, it was a five day challenge. I did like a free challenge. Oh, challenge. Group. Yeah. Oh, five day mm-hmm. challenge. Um, mm-hmm. And that was amazing. So for the five day challenge, we, we had everyone just, um, manifest the, 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 the goal was manifest 10 pounds, dollars or euros, whatever your clear, your nearest currency is just 10. Pretty much nobody did 10. Like the average was between a hundred and a thousand. Mm-hmm. Damn. And the, the, the winner for want of a better phrase was 27,000 pounds. Wow. Whoa. Um, Another one with eighteen thousand dollars and another few thousand dollars here, but the average was between a hundred and a thousand. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. But here's the kicker: the, the the challenge itself, the five day challenge itself, was a micro shift. So we did all of the setup work, but we didn't actually write the intention till Friday. 
but everybody manifested the money before we'd even set the intention. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice, nice. Money flows where energy goes. Yeah, so yeah, we um so the the book basically teaches you how to do that for yourself. Um is what it is, and it gives you a bit of background. It's not a thick textbook, it's mm -hmm. short, sharp to the point. Get in, get it manifested, and get on with it. And then, you know, if people want to have more resources or to learn more about the science behind it, they can get Stephanie Beyond Intention. But this one is, I need just to manifest some money in my life. What do I need to do to make that happen? Mm -hmm. Pow. That's pretty cool. Do you remember off the top of your head what kind of numbers of people were involved in that five-day challenge back then? How many people? Yeah. Ah, uh, there's 400 and something people in the group. Actively then there was about, I think, 50 or 60 active people that did the uh -huh. challenge. Okay. They were actually engaging. Whether, I mean, there's some people that aren't on Facebook, so we stripped the videos and sent them over to them. There's between 50 and 60 people that actually actively did it. Um, there's a couple of people that didn't get anything, but that's, you know, that's, that's the way, the, the way that it goes, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. But I think a good 80% of people got something, even if mm -hmm. it was the 10 that we'd set, because it's always or more. There's one of the, the key things. Minimum deliverables and people, when, when I first started doing the money game with micro to millions, and people are like, yeah, I'm going to manifest $100 or whatever. Because the whole point of the money game is money that comes to you without you doing anything. Mm -hmm. That's right. the whole point of it. It's not, oh, I get this opportunity and I go to work. No, it's the whole point is money in a crazy way. Like mm -hmm. one, one of the women in Micro to Millions, like her auntie came and put some money in her bra. So that was a fun and playful way for that. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's a grown ass woman and her auntie came and put money in her jar. Um, <laughs> One guy was this some stranger on the street just gave him ten dollars, just randomly gave him ten dollars. Wow. Um that's fun. one of another guy, he's in Dubai and someone randomly said, Hey, can you do me a favor? You're going here anyway. Um, can you like drop a message to someone for me? And he's like, Yeah, cool, whatever. And he did it. And he came back and the person gave him one in Dubai, everything in US dollars, and he'd set his intention in dollars, and someone put US dollars in his hand in a country where they use dirhams. Wow. So, we get some, so that's he was like, oh, okay, so that's money game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another one of my micro to millions people, she's got a yoga studio, which is shut mm. down at the moment because of quarantine. And, she, and I've encouraged her to just continue to be of service and to stack up her value vacuum, you know, pop, you know, really fill up her vortex with goodness. And she's been doing that. And randomly the other day, someone anonymously donated a thousand dollars to her business into the checking account. She doesn't know who it is, just a thousand dollars showed up in her checking account. So, you know, we get people on different ranges of the scale, you know, people that are still sort of breaking through that resistance and starting to build momentum mm -hmm. and doing, you know, a few dollars here and there. Uh, I remember my sister, her first, she's like, oh, I've never manifested anything before ever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when she played the money game and she got like five dollars, five pounds, and she was so excited. Mm -hmm about this five pounds. Yeah. And then like a week later, her, uh, my brother-in-law was supposed to get a pay increase at work and ended up get like a, a thousand or 900 euro bonus mm -hmm. out of the blue. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like the book shows you the importance of celebrating the small things of starting yeah. with manifesting the small things first, and then seeing what happens as you kind of evolve, but it starts with the small things and everybody that's manifested the big things, They've already got that momentum going with the small things. So I, mean, I remember when we first started Micro to Millions, people were like, oh, I don't need $100. Like, I've got like 10 grand I need to make. Like, start. Yeah. Investing this 100. Start with credit, creating the 100 and watch the magic happen. And people that have done that are the ones that are now on hundreds of thousands and so on and so forth in the program from zero. Because mm -hmm. they started with just going for that small goal. That's very cool. And it's fun too. I mean, I, um, I was not part of your particular challenge last October, but I've done stuff like that um and it, it's fun when it happens i mean even if it is a small amount and i think i the time i did that um friend of yours steve Rawls, friend of mine too um challenged me to do it and so i tried it and I, I got like three or four levels up it was you know get it and then get it doubled and double it again and double it again that kind of thing i got up into mm -hmm. around three or four hundred dollars and i forgot about it and i forgot about it <laughs> i forgot about it because i did what you did i ended up wait what you talked about i mean I, I end up getting something far beyond what I expected. Mm -hmm. And it's it's kind of a shock when it happens. Mm. It really is. It's a shock. Mm. It's like, 
how did that happen? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Alex, have you yeah. ever tried anything like that? Have you ever done one of these challenges like that? Um, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't think intentionally because everything's intentional, but yeah, m money has shown up at random times in surprising ways. And I'm just like, oh yeah, well that was coming to me anyway. So, <laughs> but I do appreciate it. And have, I have you actually done it as like an intention? Like I'm going to attract at least $10 or something like that. I, I attracted my stimulus sooner than I, than I thought I would. Okay. All right. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, because I, I already had the money spent. Mm. So that's, that's really what I did. So I already had the money spent and where it was going, I needed the piece of paperwork to, to tell them that I was intending to give them the money. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask for the piece of paperwork and then the money will be there. And that's exactly what happened. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's good. That's mm -hmm. powerful. I think it's easy for us to lose sight of just how magnificently we manifest from time to time because mm -hmm. it falls under the remit of this is what I do. I mean, I, I encourage people to celebrate everything that they manifest in life, even the stuff that they don't really enjoy because yeah. you manifested it. Right. Mm -hmm. but that's evidence that you can manifest. So now it's about directing that power into a desire and then feeling really good about that and then watching it funnel into it. Mm -hmm. When I was doing the, uh, the doubler approach, I think the next level I was supposed to attract was something like $250 or something like that. And it came in at around $900 on some sort of, I can't remember what it was at the top uh, at the moment. I, I remember at the time it happened, but it was some kind of a business thing you know, for my regular business that came out of the blue that I didn't expect and mm -hmm. gave me an extra 900 bucks at a time when I really needed it. It was great. And then I, I, kind of put out there, okay, I want to get into four figures next, but I didn't really do the work the way I'd done previously. I just kind of did it once and then kind of forgot and moved on. I, I kind of left the game, so to speak. And within a few weeks of that is when, actually it was about two weeks later, is when my sister got in touch with me. Now this was last fall, last July 30, or July 27th, my mom passed. Mm -hmm. And I'd been involved with my sister in a lot of the stuff that was involved, including when we got a house for her so my sister could take care of her and her financial situation and so forth. And I had forgotten about a piece of her financial situation. So when she passed, I didn't think there was much of an estate left. There was an actual a piece that I'd forgotten about completely that I knew about like a year before, but it just had slipped out of my mind. Mm -hmm. And so when my sister contacted me and told me that uh, herself, my, my brother and myself, <laughs> The three of us all were getting this large, large sum of money. I was like blown away. Like, where did that come from? Mm. Oh my God, I'd forgotten about that account. You know, mm. just, <laughs> you know, so there's another example of now, would I have gotten that anyway? I, I guess I probably would have, but the timing of it was amazing because here I had gone through that process. I just kind of let it go and then boom, it shows up. I mean, that's how often do we talk about that kind of pattern happening? When you, mm. when you release the resistance, all of a sudden stuff happens. And that's exactly what happened with me. So, mm. and then there was another part that was even better because the amount that showed up was significantly less than what should have showed up. I later mm -hmm. found out. I figured it out. My sister didn't know this was going on either, but there, there was a glitch with the way that previous asset had been set up and the um, company that was managing it had mistakenly held taxes out when they shouldn't have. Oh. So there's like a huge chunk of, of tax money that is yet to show up. It's going to show up sometime soon. We've gotten some of it, but we haven't gotten all of it yet. So it's like, it's the gift that keeps on giving is what it yep. is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a celebration point, if any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've had multiple points along the way to celebrate. Like, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, Brilliant. that's really fun. So... What uh, what made you decide to put all this into uh, this book? Because like you said, you'd written about it uh, in broader terms in the book that we've already previously discussed, um, Stepping Beyond Tensions, but mm -hmm. you decided to put it into a more focused form. What made you decide to, to do that? Well, um, this has been, for the last, I'd say, 14 or 15 months, a focus of my work has been speaking about financial abundance only because it's the number one excuse I hear people talking about when they mm. when I was looking at other parts of their life, mm -hmm. it's a place where a lot of importance is placed. 
uh, and a lot of focus and energy. So in terms of my real mission, which is let people know that they've got something big and beautiful here to do in their life, give them examples that show that that is possible and get rid of excuses. Money just kept showing up as an excuse. So in order to fulfill my mission statement, it, it was, you know, it was incumbent upon me to really empower people in, in, in manifesting money and just really helping them to see that there is no difference in manifesting the money to go on a nice holiday mm. than manifesting the beautiful morning that you witnessed today. Yeah. No difference mm -hmm. between the two, save for the stories we tell ourselves about the difference. Right. And, um, this is one of the things that inspired me to, to get micro to millions off the ground. Can you hear that? Yeah, mm -hmm. we did hear that. The, the... <laughs> did you hear is that? Is that a motorcycle yeah. or a vacuum? It's a drill. Anyway, oh. drill. so um, <laughs> uh, that's one of the things that inspired me to get micro to billions going. And we've just had so much joy in, and, and watching people take care of the energy around that and then seeing other things heal as well. Mm -hmm. I realized that people will run and give me their time, energy and attention if I'm telling them how to make money. Mm. versus me mm -hmm. saying, hey, I want you to be an independent creator of your own life and I want you to recognize how amazing you are and how magical you are. They're like, oh yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to manifest money. <laughs> teach me! So, so <laughs> giving yeah. people what they want so that they want what I have to give is um, mm. is why I've been focused on, on the financial abundance. And we've got just so much testimonial case work, case study and evidence that the tools work in that area that now people are starting to listen to me when I say, okay, now let's get you healthy. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at your relationship situation. Now let's look at your purpose and so on and so forth because they've seen the evidence in the finance, in the finances. Yeah. It's true. It's well, that was a smart strategy. It was a smart strategy. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and it is one of the big three. I mean, there are three things that top most lists of questions, money, relationships, and health. Those are like yep. one of the big ones. And that's, mm. I, I think you could probably argue that's probably the top one of the three. Mm. Yeah. The city yeah. would, would rightfully point out that we have relationships with everything. So relationships really belongs at the top, but you know, now we're I mean, we, we deal with, in micro communities, we deal with relationship to money. It's one of the principal things that we do, yeah. like addressing the, the relationship to money. Um, with the health, I just send people to Dr. Joe. You can have stuff. <laughs> just, yeah, I've, I've got, yeah. I've got the right back for you. You'll offload it. <laughs> Yeah, just, 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 he's, he's the pro, you know, and if yeah. they get stuck in the day to day application of the work, then come back and apply beyond intention, but make that your principal go to. Yeah. Um, uh, and Dr. Joe talks about health more than anything else. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of like plugging in the little gap that's not really getting handled. Right. Cause I, I, I get really frustrated with some of the sort of the nonsensical stories that people are told. Around manifesting money, I'll oh, just rub this crystal on your left knee, and yeah. your ancestors will bequeath you <laughs> all your heart's desires. It annoys me, so I'm like, okay, let's cut the BS. And I'm actually working on like a little product now, like it's going to be like ten bucks or something, like a a, a, a no BS manifester kit. So <laughs> I'm, I'm dying to see that. I'm just working on that. So it's going to be like a little one that's got some resources and then it'd be like a bigger one that's got some other little bits and pieces. But so we're working on that, but I, I want to finish doing something else I'm doing, but I'm looking forward to, to launching that this summer just to just cut the BS. That's good. If I yeah. were to make a manifesting kit, I literally would have just a box with a mirror in it. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I, might put a mirror. I might put a mirror in the level up kit. I'm, I'm yeah. still in your head. Yeah. Go ahead, take it. <laughs> That's a good one. Thank That's you. Really good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, got a couple of live stream things to share. First of all, Barbara Johnson says, I'll take $10 that the others think is too small. So she's right? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> and then Jenny has a question. She says, would it work in asking for money for a group, say the group you actively volunteer for, or does it only work for yourself? Interesting question. Okay. Cool question. So let's just tackle something. First and foremost, the thing that you do does not matter as much as the energy that you're in when you're doing it. Right. Mm. So if you're asking for another group because you don't feel worthy to receive for yourself, then it's not going to work. Mm. Yeah, why can't you receive it yourself and give it to the group? And why not just receive it yourself? Why does someone else have to be involved? Mm -hmm. So there's the importance levels there. 
And generally mm. speaking, that is, that's a worthiness thing. Um, I'm sure she won't mind because I won't mention her by name, but I did a, an intervention coaching session with someone earlier today. And uh, what we actually uncovered was deep down, she's been holding on to this limiting belief that she cannot have for herself. It must be for others. She cannot have for herself. It must be for others. And it's sitting there literally at deep, deep level, even like dove into the unconscious and the unconscious like had some force field of this story. I can't mm-hmm. have for myself. It must be for others. And I found over the last couple of decades of being in this talk type of information, the second that someone starts talking about someone else, generally speaking on some level, there's a story that they're not allowed to have it for themselves. There's something wrong. This isn't that you don't take care of others, but mm-hmm. you fill up your cup. And with the overflow, you're more abundantly able to serve others. Right. Yeah. So if you're, if you're not in a position where you have got money to, to just give to someone else, then stop asking about giving to someone else and ask for yourself first, get mm-hmm. yourself filled up, and then you'll be able to much more abundantly serve others. Agreed. It's a very important point because until you get yourself into that place that you're describing, you really don't have anything to give to somebody else. Mm-hmm. But you got to be there first. You, you I mean, mm-hmm. energetically or even just physical money or physical anything, you got to have it first. You can't give mm-hmm. what you don't have. Right. Exactly. And, and there's something to be said as well for, um, for robbing someone else of their journey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get, you're doing people a disservice by giving them a handout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. True. So even like the, 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 the work that my siblings and I did with the foundation and our intentions for it are to give handouts for people. It's to empower people to create for themselves. Mm-hmm. It's so we're not reason. talking about going into a village and feeding them for the day. We're talking about going in and giving them the tools to create abundance for themselves in, perp- in perpetuity and changing the vibration that they're operating in so that their children and their children's children will continue the expansion so that nobody going down the line has to accept the handout. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Believe it or not, it's one of the things that I think is actually going to come out of the pandemic. I know that sounds really, really strange. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, but, need, I need to I break down on Mr. Wolf. Yeah. I, well, <laughs> I have to break it down for myself because it, even as I say it, it sounds strange to me. But anytime that we go through a trial of some kind, a difficulty, something where we're struggling through it, this is something Joel Elston taught me really well. Struggle inevitably leads to springboards. Mm-hmm. And when when you look at it that way, you and you understand it that way, what you're also recognizing is that a springboard is another way of saying a person who is gaining more self confidence, because that's why they are able to springboard out. Their self confidence in some way has improved. So I think we can pretty much count on with all the struggle people have been going through just in the last month or two. There's going to be a lot of springboarding going on. Yeah, you know, as this thing winds down. I would say that, and I, I always, do you want to say hello, Ariana? Do you want to say hello? No? Okay. You need something? Can you give me two minutes? I want some. Yes. Two minutes? Yes. There, there's an excellent example of a person you can learn from where springboarding is concerned. Kids are the ultimate springboarders. Facts. So good. Okay, I'll they bounce back so quickly. It's amazing. Exactly. <laughs> okay i'll get you some watermelon okay thank you i'm coming i'm just to sorry about that guys <laughs> <laughs> i was just commenting um, to uh to, to alex there that uh, kids are are an excellent example for this whole springboarding concept because they springboard as well as anybody maybe even mm-hmm. better so they, oh they yeah, just, they yeah and, they will, and they so will quickly. And they'll commandeer your springboard also. So Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you may never get it back. <laughs> yeah. Never get it back. But I was going to, I was going to say, uh, that if I defer to nature and in nature, anyone ever heard the story about the, the person who saw the butterfly breaking free from the cocoon and helped the butterfly out, but the butterfly oh, didn't yes. fly. Yes. No, I never heard that. Yeah. So um, for, for the listeners as well, so there's a story about someone who saw a butterfly struggling to get out of the cocoon and mm-hmm. they went and helped the butterfly out, but the wings were weak and it couldn't fly and it ended up dying, I think. Yeah. So in nature, the resistance creates the tension that gives the strength to not only survive, but to fly. And, you know, I think I shared a post uh, today, I shared a post 
that I made about a year ago, I think it was a one year ago memory about this idea that the struggle can be reframed away from this disempowering negative thing into an empowering experience and enables us to move to the next level in our lives. And so the tension of some adversity creates that muscle that is demanded of us in, in order to move forward. Mm. And some people can't take the pressure. They can't take the heat and they melt. And there are those that harden such as steel and, and move on and, uh, and, and are stronger for it. So I, I don't think, I don't think it's for us at this level mm. of consciousness that has very limited output to dictate this is the right path for that person versus maybe asking for guidance on how I could support this person on their journey the most. And I can say that even if you look at the economics of it, charity is a washout. It doesn't help. Mm -hmm. That's why I preach about entrepreneurial philanthropy versus charity, which mm -hmm. is creating value that perpetuates and teaching people to recreate that value and find the ways to do it for themselves versus oh. Poor child, here is the money for your poor child. <laughs> right. So just Good. just one sec, guys. I'm just gonna go and um yep, go ahead. Well, get some watermelon. Out, yeah. I'll share another comment from live stream because Josephine shared something about a Neville story. She says, one of mm -hmm. my favorite Neville stories is the one where a guy felt guilty for not giving a homeless man money, thereby leading him to revise the situation in his mind. In his mind, he reunited with a whole homeless man. Up and apologized. And the homeless man said he forgave him and realized he had to get his life together. Mm. Wow. Now that's not your typical manifestation story, right? It really isn't. But it spells it out. I mean, yeah, just like does. Daniel was saying, you really, he, he's right. It, it, it's like the old uh, Jesus proverb, right? You um, give a man a fish and you, you feed him for a day, teach a man how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. I mean, that, that's right. not actually what Jesus said, but it's attributed to him because of, you know, loaves and fishes and all that kind of thing. Right, right. Um, and it's true. It, the, 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 the person who learns how to attract for themselves is mm -hmm. the person who can feed himself for a lifetime. That's powerful. Right. That's a really mm -hmm. powerful thing. Um, when we are in a mood to give, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't give. Yeah. You know, giving is still a good idea. Doesn't mean that the money can't be received well. It can. Mm -hmm. I think really the most important question is, what is the vibrational state of the recipient? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not the most important. Well, how do you, how do you figure most that out? The most important question is, what's the vibrational state of the giver? Because if you're not in the right vibrational state, the giver right. doesn't help anyway. You know? mm -hmm. But once you've got that one done, then the next one is, what's the vibrational state state of the receiver? Because... Um, it, it kind of ties into uh, what I haven't seen a lot of lately on Facebook. Maybe people have finally shifted their vibrations and stopped asking about it. But we used to see lots and lots of questions from people asking, how can I, how can I attract for somebody else? Yeah. Right. right. We've done shows yeah, on that. We've that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, it's kind of and, been overshadowed by pandemic worry. So. Well, probably. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. I mean, these things do have priorities. But, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is that 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 is a very frequent question that have, I haven't seen a lot of lately, and like you say, maybe because of the pandemic. And it's a question that kind of doesn't pay attention to what the word attraction means. Mm -hmm. And I'll tie this back in a moment to what I was saying earlier. Okay. But I, I was thinking about actually this morning as I was getting up, you know, when you're first waking up, your, your conscious mind is kicking into gear and you get all this stuff that's fed to you from yeah. and all that. that. That's what I was getting. And I, and I got this segment. I almost turned it into a meme. I just haven't taken the time to do it. <laughs> we go like this. Attraction is where you draw something to yourself. Mm -hmm. Transmission is where you send something to somebody else. Okay. Right? Yeah. And if you attract something, there's mm -hmm. no rule that says you have to keep it. Right. That's true. That was my point earlier. And similarly, if you transmit something, there's no rule that says they have to keep it. Right. Very true. Very true. So when you lay it Unless out that way. something like an S. What was that, Daniel? What did you say? <laughs> I didn't finish. <laughs> okay. No, it still, it still spreads, but, you know. Yeah. You really shouldn't give it to anybody else. <laughs> yeah. 
I've lost, but that's okay. <laughs> and that speaks beautifully and sweetly of you, Mr. Walt. Oh, okay. yeah, it does. We live here in the gutter. You're a higher barbless. <laughs> ah, it was a gutter comment. Okay. Well, at least I have, yeah. a, I have a context now. That's, that's something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I fed, I fed Ariana. What, what have we, uh, what have we missed? Uh, well, we were just carrying on the conversation about, um, struggle and giving and, when to give in and what happens when you try to use your powers to attract for somebody else. And mm -hmm. to kind of address that, I was bringing up uh, something that I came up with this morning that I was telling Alex about. It, it's kind of a meme idea where um, the first part says attraction is what you draw to yourself. Mm -hmm. Transmitting is what you send to somebody else. You really can't attract to somebody else. You, you transmit to somebody else. You send something to somebody else. And, just because you attract something doesn't mean you have to keep it. And just because you transmit mm -hmm. something doesn't mean they have to keep it. Right. When you, when you Correct. keep it within that context, now it becomes clear. Well, you really can't attract for somebody else. They can attract. You can transmit to them, but you can't mm -hmm. determine whether or not they're going to get it or keep it. It's, that's all. Their right. Decision. And when you basically take the pressure off yourself by looking at it that way, well, first of all, you get high vibration <laughs> because mm -hmm. now you're not trying to you know, manipulate. You're not trying to get all stressed out about the fact that, oh, my God, this person's got to get what I'm trying to send to them. Yeah, it's like, how do I play not? vibrational chess? It's too much work. <laughs> too much work. And, and even more important than that, you're, you're being respectful of where mm -hmm. they are, regardless of where they are. See, that's what's so cool about that meme from my perspective. You don't have to know where they are vibrationally in order to give respect that way. All you have mm -hmm. to do is just say, I'm sending something their way. If they are in a place to receive it, they'll receive it. If they're not in a place to receive it, they won't receive it. And even if they receive it, it's up to them whether they keep it. And now all the pressure's off me and all the pressure's off them. Yeah. So that's why I like that approach. Well, I like your approach. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, your, your money game book, Daniel, has... One of the longer titles that I've seen, um, Money yeah. Game, A Wealth Manifestation Guide, Level Up Your Mindset Step-by-Step Step and Create an Abundant Life. Mouthful. Mm -hmm. And the phrase, level up your mindset, kind of grabs me when I read that. Level up your mindset. Mm -hmm. What did you have in mind when you said that? Um, because the gatekeeper to experience is our beliefs. I can, have as, I can be as high up my spiral as I want. My vortex can be filled with as much goodness as I want. I can do as many groovy, sexy things as I want. If I don't believe it's possible, then the opportunity will be there and I won't witness it. The blessing will come and I won't see it or it will just be stuck. Mm -hmm. So it's opening up that gateway. Okay. But not doing that independently. We're not just opening up a gateway and not sending anything through. <laughs> we're, we're loading up the cart and opening up the gate and then taking it through. So okay. in, in the verbiage you used, is a leveled up mindset a balanced mindset? Is that what you mean? No, leveled up mindset is an expanded mindset. Leveled expanded. up the amount of abundance that you can. Because here's the thing. The, the amount of money that you consistently experience now, what I refer to as your edge, is a direct reflection to where you're at internally. Mm -hmm. Your life right now is directly a direct reflection of exactly where your wealth thermostat is at right now. The most that you've ever received in any one lump sum, your hard edge, as I refer to in the book and in other areas, that is the most that in your mind you believe is possible for you to receive. And even the circumstances around that add some flavor to it too. So let's say, for example, um, someone that wins the lottery, the reason why 90% of them go back to where they were before is because it's too far outside the edge of what mm. they believe is possible. There's no that big gap becomes a vacuum that sucks you right back to where you are like a black hole. Right. And I've seen this firsthand in some people's lives too. Right. But when you've micro shifted, which is just one way to do so when you've micro shifted to get to that new level, then that hard edge becomes something that can stay the hard mm -hmm. edge. Your consistent hard edge is where you'll always come, come back to, um, as a normal setting. So when we're talking about leveling up the mindset, what we're talking about doing is expanding what that outer edge of capacity for holding wealth is mm -hmm. opening up the belief system to allow more in. So that when we do that in a world, when we are feeling good, when we're setting intentions, when we're doing even energy clearing and all this other good groovy stuff that helps us to deal with our emotional state, when we're healing our emotional relationship to money, then we're actually able to hold it 
because our belief system is open to receiving it mm-hmm. versus I have a spike and then revert back to my, my old norm. So I guess the, the word level in that case is almost equivalent of getting to a new level and staying. Yes. It's almost literal. And it's understanding what level you want. I mean, when I, did the, when I do the work with people in creating financial freedom, which for me is income coming in to meet your, your needs without you needing to work, you can choose to work if you want. We need to understand but what, what do I need on a monthly basis? Mm-hmm. There's going to be different levels of that. There's going to be a level of core needs. Like, what do I need to pay my bills and keep a roof over my head and put food in the refrigerator versus what do I need to do that, have all my food shopped from Whole Foods and also have a nice fancy date night once a week. That's a different level. And each one of those levels demands another version of ourselves because we can only experience what we're vibrational match to. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. And that level is, a, for me, I believe is, is a linchpin as to what our vibrational match capacity is. Okay. Okay. So it, it's almost expressed as a limit, really. Yeah. What's, but I don't what, want to what's use the limit. limit of your belief or of your <laughs> vibration? You know, yeah. How, how high do you go? Yeah. How high is up? <laughs> but limit's got like a negative connotation to it. So I understand why he said level up instead of limit. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I, mean, I do talk about... Busting limiting beliefs in some places, but <laughs> for the cover of the book, I, I wanted to keep it as um, as expansive sure. as, I, as, I, as I was able to con- conjure the words to do. Well, Jeffrey's got an interesting um, thing he shared here. I'm, I'm curious to see what your reaction is going to be to it. He says, giving is a good way to prove to the universe that you have enough. You live in abundance and you are available to share with others. If you've set the intention to receive, or it could just be your subconscious mind creating uh, an avenue for you to go deeper into lack, which is what I see more in my experience. Mm. It's a fine line, isn't it? Yeah. It could be perceived to be a fine line, but actually when you look at it dispassionately, it's not that fine line at all. Mm-hmm. If I'm giving, but I've set no request to receive, then I'm not going to receive. I'm just going to be giving. The universe is not a tyrant. It responds to our requests. Mm -hmm. So I talk about giving all the time. I talk about value vacuums. I talk about, um, especially introducing the reality transurfing work now, setting up the mirror by being it in advance to create that mirror image that comes back to us as our world. However, I have to set that up. The universe isn't going to give me something I haven't asked for. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, is that's the equivalent of me going around now, giving all the, my, the food in my house away and then saying, but Alex, I gave the food in my house away. Why, why didn't you give me the food? <laughs> you didn't bro, ask. You didn't ask me if you need food, bro. I've got, I've got a good <laughs> right here. <laughs> There's some tuna milks. Like, I, I got tuna milks for days. Tuna milks for days, but you didn't ask for it. And this is, a, for me, mm-hmm. a common situation or setup that people find themselves in. Again, in two decades of experience being in this information, mm-hmm. people doing the giving part and not doing the asking bit. <laughs> why, why do you think that happens? What, I mean, because it's, it's, it's almost counterintuitive. Because you just keep it saying where you are. The, the thing is, this is another example I find as well of things being made more complicated than they are. We experience who we are more than what we do. Mm. Right? And this is where my alchemic life creation work comes in, where we're no longer setting intentions consistently. We don't have to. We just set our vibration, and our vibration does the heavy lifting. So I know that my vibration, I want to have... For example, my five pillars, financial abundance, loving connection, um, higher, uh, higher and expanded consciousness, um, perfect, meaningful purpose, and health and vitality. I set that as my frequency every day. Therefore, mm-hmm. I don't need to go through my day sitting all of these things. I set my frequency up in the morning. I check in during the day. So I'm making the request of the universe via who I am, abundance and so on and so forth. So when I give, I'm giving, and that gap that's been created through the giving is filled up with more of who we are, that expansion is filled in because the universe abhors a vacuum. There are no empty vacuums in the universe. It's always filled up with more of who we are. Mm. But I've set myself up to be abundant. So when I give, that's filled in with abundance. Now, if I'm giving and I haven't tackled my unconscious beliefs about lack, that <laughs> gap should be filled with lack. Because <laughs> we get who we are. So if right. someone hasn't tackled the trauma around being in a poverty, uh, po- poverty environment as a child, uh, past life karma, contracts that they haven't addressed around I need to be in lack or unconscious programs from some trauma that happened in their teens or early twenties around lack Mm -hmm. when they're giving all they're doing is that empty space is getting filled up with more of the same. 
yeah. not abundance, but more like mm. covered with the pretty cloth of I'm giving and therefore I'm a good person. And this is what the universe asks for. The universe doesn't work like that. It's not my opinion. It's demonstrated fact. It's, it's a collective agreement, universal law. We don't just get something because we gave it away. We got something because we matched the frequency of it. And the giving was a demonstration of that frequency match, not me giving to be a good person and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, we actually have somebody who's uh, entered the waiting room. Looks like they, they wanted to ask a question. I think this is somebody who actually had um, connected previously and wanted to ask us something. And actually, I think uh, this person wanted to tell us a story. Um, I think it was a quarantine related story um, from what he said in the chat that other day. So I'm going to try to connect them in and see if we can find out what they had in mind. Ignacio, are you there? Hello there. How are you? So what can we do for you? Do you have a question or did you have something you wanted to share? Oh, here we go. Aha. Was there something that you wanted to uh, bring up? Okay. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it. And I'll just put you back in the waiting area. So, okay. That was different. <laughs> oh, my God. Anybody got time for that? Not sure what that was all about, but. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is this what you were talking about on the email? I missed this. Show. Yeah, yeah, stuff like this. It, yeah. It's um, parallel. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, the email, I was like, okay, now I got to go back, go through the episode, see what happened. <laughs> this, this person was actually quite polite. Mm -hmm. The, 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 uh, what, uh, listeners are probably wondering what the heck we're talking about because they can't see what happened here. But, mm -hmm. um, it, it kind of looks like this person was just kind of jumping on the podcast just to get a little attention. And mm -hmm. uh, last Friday we had, a situation where uh was it last friday or two fridays ago i can't two remember fridays ago. two fridays ago uh, mm -hmm. where three people uh, four people i think actually tried to bomb the the, the uh, show while we were um broadcasting and they were all kind of shouting over each other and throwing up stuff on screen and so forth it was basically i think it was a hate america day kind of a thing but mm -hmm. um, yeah so i'm not sure if that's what was the case with this person but they clearly weren't here to talk about the law of attraction, so we'll just bid them adieu and wish them well. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> that was like, anyone seen what, you know the film Watchmen? Yep. With the Rorschach. Yeah, yeah. I think you remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Love and light. Mm. Anywho, so <laughs> we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? I forgot. <laughs> uh, Jeffrey was talking about giving. Uh, oh, giving. that's true. Yeah. Well, actually, he raised a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if it just feels good to be part of the game and cycle? Okay. This, this is the thing. For me, there's no judgment. This is what I, I, I want to be very, very clear. Mm. Very, very clear. I'm not, from my limited perspective, perspective a limited view of all of infinity saying that there's a right way or a wrong way for someone to show up in their life and what they want to experience. Mm -hmm. That's your journey. My role as has been demonstrated time and time again, is to support those that have been unconsciously playing out those roles and actually desire something different. So if someone desires to go through the experience of giving under the illusion that it's going to do something that it probably isn't each to their own with their apples. If someone genuinely wants to create abundance in their life, for example, had been led to believe that giving was going to be the, the way that we're going to do it without the other pieces being done, then here is how to, to fix that so that you can get what you actually desire. But if you're rocking and rolling and loving life, giving away, regardless of what's going to happen, do you bro. That's what I personally say. Right. And I celebrate that person because they are in abundance because they're experiencing what they truly desire. But my thing is, 
do it consciously. And that's what the, one of my most controversial videos I did, the stop lying video that I did that made a lot of people upset <laughs> was just saying, own what you want. If that's what you want, then do it. Just don't waste anybody else's time. Right. That's it. Own it. If that's what you want to do. But if you're doing it and this is an unconscious program playing out, don't argue with other people about it. Just, just do what you want to do. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? That's uh, that's where I stand on it. I think there's something to it that if, if you have to explain to somebody else why you're doing it, it probably means you're not doing it from the place of pure, pure joy. Mm. You're yes. Just, you're in a place where you have to explain it. Yeah. Divinity doesn't explain itself. It just is. Right. Mm. So the divine, yeah. divine is not going to be made manifest in something that has to explain itself to mortal ears. It's just mm. incongruent. <laughs> not impossible, but rather incongruent. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, people that defend their position, it's the ego or the pain body that's trying to defend the position. Mm. Versus, like you said, that pure, clear intention coming out to experience something. And that could be part of their journey too. And maybe the part of the journey for me is to witness such things, for example, or for, for us here, witnessing that kind of thing. But I do so, my intention is to do so without judgment myself, because what you damn damns you back, but to hold loving space for whatever my role is in that and see what there is to learn from it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I have to say we have somebody else who's waiting in the waiting area. I'm not quite as inclined to jump in there and pull them in because it's not a name that I recognize. So if you are also listening to the live stream, um, I will request that you post a question there first and let us get to know you a little bit. And then once we've gotten to know you and it looks like uh, we need to get more of a conversation going, then we'll be happy to bring you onto the podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Because it's pretty easy for someone to change the name as it shows up. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Pretty easy to do. No doubt about it. So, but thank you for dropping in. We appreciate that. Mm -hmm. This is the <laughs> webinar format, I think. Can you not? And then you can see them on the side and check the credentials. Uh, you that probably works. can. I, I'm not signed up for the webinar package. I, I have the package that's one down from that. But uh, oh, okay. I think you probably can do that. Just because I'm not saving a lot of, of, of uh, past shows on the Zoom platform for people to uh, play mm -hmm. back. So, so Got it. I really need all that storage. Flat mess. Well, that was an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go back to uh, your book title again, and I'm going to uh, talk about the last bit, create an abundant life. Yeah. And I like the phrasing in part because we often think about the word abundant in terms of wealth. And of course, mm -hmm. your book here is about money game. It's about uh, the wealth side of it. But abundance actually goes beyond wealth. Abundance mm -hmm. is actually a much bigger concept, in my mm -hmm. view anyway. I think probably a lot of people share that. It looks like you're nodding your head. You believe that too. Yeah, I agree. Abundance is, is about having a really full life, a life mm. that's just full of joy and excitement and fun and interesting stuff and all kinds of great, great things going on that you just get excited mm -hmm. about every single day. That to me is abundance. Is that what you had in mind? Definitely. For me, abundance is having so much of something that you create an overflow. Yes. So when I, when I talk about the scale and I'll give it, I'll give the quick, quickly the steps in, in relation to money, but you'll, you'll see how it overlaps. You have scarcity stability, freedom, abundance. That's the way that I scale it. Mm -hmm. So I can have a scarcity in something then I can have stability in something, then freedom. So I'm not, you know, I've got some wiggle room there. Then abundance, it's I've got overflow, mm -hmm. you know, so and that overflow can happen in love and joy. It can happen in um, the vibrance energy that comes from being healthy. It mm -hmm. can come from the love that's in our heart. It can come from money. Um, it can come from any of these things. And for me, the abundance is that overflow. Almost an overabundance, really. <laughs> <laughs> but is there such a thing as overabundance, though? I think that the universe has an abundance of everything. Mm. Uh, and it's our stories about lack that create that illusion of lack that we end up subscribing to and living out and playing yeah. out. Mm. Versus having abundance in our lives, the overflow. That raises an interesting question. I'm sure I've asked it of you before. And Alex, I'll be interested to hear what your take is on that as well. But when we're in that lack vibration, what's your favorite way to start changing the story and then actually change the story? What, what do you like to change too? Do you have like a 
a pattern that you follow or is it just whatever comes to you or what's your way to climb usually, out of line? Usually it's wherever, whatever comes to me, but most of the time it's distraction. I try to distract myself with something else so I can let that, let that idea just flow through and then, you know, be gone. And then once I've done that, it, a, a conclusion or an answer usually comes to me on how to solve the, on how to solve the issue. Okay. So, um, when we're talking about lack, I, that's the issue you're talking about. How, how yeah. do you deal with a lack? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's what you're saying. Okay. Plus, I don't really think of a lot of things as lack. I think of not yet more. You know what I mean? That's, that's more how I like to handle it. What's, what does that mean to you? What's the difference? Meaning, I don't see it as, okay, I don't have something. I say it as I don't have something yet. Mm. And that, that way, I'm, you know, it's still coming to me. It's just whenever the universe decides I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Okay. How about you, Dan? What's your best um, way to come out of lack? For me, it's... I can't, I can't. I am. Can I can have one minute. I just need to say something, and then you can show me. Okay? Hey, Lasha. This much is green enough. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to come and open it in just one second, okay? Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> She's um, so cute. <laughs> <laughs> and very commanding. No, you don't do it like that anymore. You've got to do it like this, okay? <laughs> and she's got this little, her finger bends back a little bit. Oh, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, the head tilted. Yeah. It leans towards the attitude. <laughs> it does, it does. It points directly to the attitude and the direction <laughs> to follow and not be destroyed. Um, <laughs> so, um, Small humans, they're the best. Um, I call her Queen Ariana, by the way. She's got a song, everything. Queen Ariana. (laughs) (laughs) So for me, it's beyond intention (laughs) all the way. (laughs) Because what we're talking about is if we're in lack and we want to pivot out of lack, then we're saying that we're in a current trend or trajectory of momentum that we want to break and move into something else. Mm. So I set the intention of what I want to move towards. I accept that I have the power and responsibility to change it. I get present. I connect to that vibration and I'm listening to see if I'm there. And if I'm not, I whip through again and keep whipping through until I'm on it. Mm-hmm. That's it. So it, it's, it's basically a, I'm trying to think what the best way to, to describe what I'm hearing there. I'm, I'm hearing no effort. I'm hearing, I'm not going to resist. I'm just going to shift. I'm not, I'm not hearing any kind of story that I often hear from someone, which I don't really expect to be you because you don't live in lack, but you know, for somebody who's living in lack, they're, they're trying to find some way to kind of justify the lack a little bit. And that's why they end up staying in the lack. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And what we, what we resist persists. And I think mm. when, when we, when we, when we start looking at things through the, through the, the, through the lens of the divine, and by that, I mean, through the lens of truth, which is, Lack is an illusion created to maintain a worldview that doesn't have to stay there. Mm -hmm. Because lack is not a truth. It's a reality potential, but it's not a truth. Because the truth is there is an abundance of everything. So if I'm experiencing something that's out of alignment with that, then it means that I've subscribed to the story of that. Mm -hmm. And what I need to do is just subscribe to something else. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly and, and and it's important for people to understand that you know some of these programs are deeply rooted deeply mm-hmm. deeply rooted and those roots can go back before our birth in, in some instances but when I understand that come come or not I do have the power to shift out of it and mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be some long drawn out thing I just need to really desire to shift out of it and be ready to, to do what's required of me in order to to break that momentum then it will happen then it will happen very often uh when somebody takes up a book like yours the money game book and like you said earlier you described it beautifully about how they get excited about oh yeah show me how to make the money you know you show them mm-hmm. how to be joyful and they're not quite so interested but you, you know show me the money oh yeah i'm ready for that <laughs> When they joy, have that kind of... not so much. Money, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because money creates joy. We all know that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Two differences, just laughter. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. 
<laughs> yep. But when, when when we're attracted in this way to a book like that, and I know that feeling because I've certainly been in that place, we are often coming to it, actually, I would say perhaps always coming to it from a belief that money is an obstacle that we can't overcome, that, or more precisely, the lack of money is an obstacle that we mm. can't overcome, or that we're having trouble, or we're challenged with, or we're feeling is so difficult. And it, it's funny how when we express ourselves that clearly, of course, we usually don't. Usually it's just, you know, show me the money book. That's it. I'm done. But <laughs> on those rare occasions where we actually is, you yeah. know, explain ourselves, it comes right out in what we're saying, where we're blocking ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it, it's an ironic thing. And I don't know why that happens, but it does. Because the truth is often sitting on the surface. It's just we don't have the eyes of the desire to see it. It's, yeah. it's really... I will say again, Matt, God did not make things complicated. Man did so he could say it was impossible. Mm. I like that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> but the mind is wired. The mind is wired to keep things the same because the unconscious mind, part and parcel of its remit, its, its job is to protect you, to protect your worldview, to protect your body, to keep things the same. That's safety. Safety is the same. So if you've got a robot, effectively like a, a, t like a, a keep things the same Terminator up here, <laughs> and then you're trying to fight the T T one thousand or whatever. <laughs> that's just gonna just <laughs> doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it it doesn't make any sense at all. Versus just hit send on the instructions for something else and allow the T one the T eight hundred to to protect you. Mm -hmm. The first Terminator film, people died trying to stop Arnie. The second one, they worked out, hang on a minute, I can actually program this robot to do what I need it to do for me. Mm -hmm. And to work with me versus against me. Mm -hmm. Good example. You know, and the, the mind can be the terminator for its own limiting blocks, its own limiting beliefs. If we just give it the instructions, it will show you, this is what you need to let go of. Oh, I can let go of that now. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is what you need to let go of. Okay. Yeah. Oh, this is what you need to let go of. Okay. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Bless you. And that's Thank it. You. So being ready to look compassionately at ourself to seek support when we get stuck I'm, i mean i've been open about my own current journey of getting support with some deep dug stuff myself i've got a past life regression in a couple of hours with my friend mira kelly uh she's like one of the top in the world she wrote um uh, beyond past lives it's a 20 million copy sold worldwide a hey house book she's a dear friend of mine i'm doing a session with her today i've been doing this stuff for 20 years but i still am investing consistently in having other eyes, trained eyes to come and help me stay on top of my game, mm -hmm. keep me accountable for those things. You know, I encourage Olga all the time. If I'm being a toe rag about something, let me know. If something's coming up, let me know. Why? Because we can't always see it mm. ourselves. It's true. But mm -hmm. we can always allow ourselves to be open for our world to be a mirror for us. Ariana sometimes is the mirror for me. My mm -hmm. clients sometimes are the mirror for me, books that I read. Allowing our entire world to be one big mahusive messenger speaking to us all the time can allow us to be fully supported in uncovering where these lower levels are and move into bigger levels and expand and create more abundance of all kinds. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's well stated. And it really beautifully describes how we are often blind to those little messages that we're making clear to everybody else. I think that's why a life coach can be so helpful because a life coach can see that thing that's so obvious that we can't see. Right. Well, any outside party, I think. Right, you, yeah. You just need to have a, a second set of eyes. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I said life coach, but you're right. It could be anybody. Just anybody yeah. who's not you. <laughs> you're right, right. We can't even see the fullness of our own nose. Unless yes. Let right. alone our back, the back okay. of our legs. There are parts of your body that you've never seen. Parts of your own body that you've never seen. You've never seen your show, like the fullness of your shoulder blade. Mm -hmm. You've seen it in a mirror, but you've not seen it. You've seen a reflection of it. Right. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I was like, just turn around, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. It's there. <laughs> there are limits. We're not an owl. We can't, I've, I've never seen my spine. Mm -hmm. I've seen photographs of my spine. Yeah. I've seen my spine in a double mirror. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen my spine. That's deep, man. Have you seen well, your I heart? I suppose you can't see it. It, it, it. Through out-of-body experience, you could see it. Yeah, I suppose that's a really good one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Got yeah. him. <laughs> Got him. 
<laughs> I wasn't trying to get you. I was just trying to say, is there a way to no, say that? Is, that is a good one. No, yeah. he's like, it, that's Walt's thing. He's like, hmm, is there a hole in this theory? Let me find it. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, you'd have to learn to, you'd have to learn to OBE. Hmm. What do you mean Unless by that? Unless you're natural. I know people that naturally... Out of body experience. You yeah, I, 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 know, project. I know. I know people that naturally OBE, actually. So, mm -hmm. See, right, I, I guess... basic principle stands, despite my argument being flawed. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's not flawed. <laughs> it's not flawed. Despite it's your not. argument being flawed on a supernatural level. <laughs> <laughs> Three-dimensionally speaking, yeah, you have a great yeah. spine. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get into the ethers, we're, we're, there's a whole other... Like, yeah. the, your body's not even real anyway at that point. Mm, mm. Let's talk about, you know, anyway, you're out of body body. How can you see that? The, the, re the reason I asked you when you, when you said OB I, and I asked what you meant about that, the reason I asked that question was I'm not sure, and, and maybe you have a bit different perspective on this. I'm not sure there isn't anybody who hasn't had out of body experiences, and I'm not sure there isn't anybody who doesn't regularly live outside their body. Mm -hmm. I, I think everybody, everybody does in one sense or another. Well, um, I think the OBE experience is about doing it consciously. It's like astral projection. If you dream, then you move okay. into astral planes in the dream space. Right. So maybe that's the case. Sexual reality that we experience in another level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But the OBE, the whole point of the outer body ex experience is that you consciously experience the awareness of being out of your body. And I, I remember when I had my first marginal OBE at a Dr. Joe's Dispenser event, my first, my first experience of it, it freaked me out because I felt the separation. Mm. There was a conscious awareness of a separation from my physical body. And that wow. blew my mind. Blue. <laughs> um, so it's very, very different kettle of fish, I think. Wow. To, well, that's yeah, a conscious awareness for another show then, because that, that sounds like something you need to talk about and tell us about and educate us about. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. Do you know what I'm gonna? I can get my friend um, Luigi Shambarella. He's one of the um, one of the coaches at the Monroe Institute. Robert Ron Monroe, like oh, okay. around the whole landscape of consciousness and lucid dreaming and like systemizing lucid dreaming stuff like that. Luigi's really cool. He's been on my podcast before. He's a really really cool guy. Do you want you to do what? If you get some time, check out the on the Dreaming Dan group. Okay. The in the units, there's do it with Dan live. I've got an interview with Luigi there. You can meet him. Okay. That. If All there's right. someone you're interested in, I can make the introduction. Well, well, actually, just based on your recommendation, reach out to him anyway. Yeah, I'll do that. He's Bring really, really cool. I love Luigi. Because really, really cool. I trust your judgment on this stuff. And I mean, you, everybody you've brought on so far has been a magnificent guest. I, there's mm. no way I'm going to say no. It's just mm -hmm. not going to happen. So, <laughs> just saying. Brilliant. Anyway, before we uh, run out of time, actually, we're past time, but that's okay. Oh, wow. I just want to remind everybody who's not yet a subscriber to become a subscriber, which is a relatively small piece of the listening population, I'm happy to say. But if you're in that small group, we want you to become a part of the larger group. And if you aren't sure how to do it, just go to the homepage of our website, LOAToday.net, and we have little instructions written up there that you can do in about one or two clicks. And just like that, you'll be subscribed and getting all of our episodes coming right to your device every day. And you can check us out on YouTube. How do they subscribe on YouTube, Alex? You go to YouTube, search LOA Today podcast videos, look for our smiling faces, and look down below. There is a red subscribe button. Next to the red subscribe button, there is a silver bell. Make sure you click all so you will always be notified when we are live. Thank you, Alex Vanna. We appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> Daniel, congratulations on the release of the book. That's fabulous. Thank you, Yay! Thank you for telling us about it. We appreciate that. Thanks, live streamers. Thank you especially to our podcast listeners as well. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.